I traveled all over India, but it was agony to me, my brothers, to see with my own eyes the terrible poverty of the masses, and I could not restrain my tears. It is now my firm conviction that to preach religion amongst them, without first trying to remove their poverty and suffering, is futile. It is for this reason to find means for the salvation of the Very poor of India that I am going to America. Sisters and brothers of America. It fills my heart with joy unspeakable to rise in response to the warm and cordial welcome which you have given us. I thank you 
in the name of the most ancient order of monks in the world. I thank you in the name of the mother of religions. And I thank you in the name of millions and millions of Hindu people of all classes and sects. I am proud to belong to a religion which has taught the world both tolerance and universal acceptance. We believe not only in universal toleration, but we accept all religions as true. The present convention, which is one of the most august assemblies ever held, is in itself a vindication, a declaration to the world of the wonderful doctrine preached in the Gita. Whosoever comes to me, through whatsoever form, I reach him. All men are struggling through paths which in the end lead to me. Sectarianism, bigotry and its horrible descendant, fanaticism, have long possessed this beautiful earth. They have filled the earth with violence, drenched it often and often with human blood, destroyed civilization and sent whole nations to despair. Had it not been for these horrible demons, human society would be far more advanced than it is now. But their time is come, and I fervently hope that the bell that tolled this morning in honor of this convention may be the death knell of all fanaticism, of all persecutions with the soul or with the pen, and of all uncharitable feelings between persons wending their way to the same goal. I think I should tell you a story which would illustrate the cause of this variance. Sorry to trouble you. I had no intention to come here, but I lost my way and accidentally fell into this well. But where are you from? I come from the sea. From the sea? What is that? How big is the sea? Oh, you've never seen the sea. How can I describe it to you? Is it as big as my well? My friend. How do you compare the sea with your little well? Is your sea so big? What nonsense you speak, comparing the sea with your well. There can be nothing bigger than my well. I don't believe you. You are a liar. 
You are saying this because you have not seen the sea. I can help you to get to the sea and you can see for yourself which is bigger. I don't believe you. Get out from my well. He thought he can make a fool of me and send me to the sea. None can fool me. There is nothing bigger than That has been the difficulty all the while. I am a Hindu. I am sitting in my own little well and thinking that the whole world is my little well. The Christian sits in his little well and thinks the whole world is his well. The Mohammedan sits in his little well and thinks that is the whole world. Much has been said of the common ground of religious unity. But if anyone here hopes that this unity will come by the triumph of any one of the religions and the destruction of the others, to him I say, brother, yours is an impossible hope. If the parliament of religions has shown anything to the world, it is this. It has proved to the world that holiness, purity, and charity are not the exclusive possessions of any church in the world, and that every system has produced men and women of the most exalted character. In the face of this evidence, if anybody dreams of the exclusive survival of his own religion and the destruction of the others, I pity him from the bottom of my heart and point out to him that upon the banner of every religion will soon be written in spite of resistance, hell and not fight assimilation and not destruction, harmony and peace and not dissension.